So, hi, Paul Nolan. Hello there, how are you? Right, I'm good, thanks. Here at Dance Fair. Indeed, Dance Fair 2015 in Utrecht, Netherlands. Nice. Um, I just wanted to get you in because we were really interested in the way that you kind of work with, uh, obviously you work with electronic dance music, but you mm -hmm. also work on a lot of film stuff. Yeah. And I was just kind of interested how the uh, relationship from one to the other uh, informs one another and stuff. Yeah, totally. I mean, nowadays with the way the technology is with plug-in technology and a lot of the, the great tools that are available to us, the time's never been sort of easier for us to be able to move seamlessly between the, the film score world and the electronic music world. And if you look at a lot of movies that are being made at the moment with their scores, especially over the last five or so years, it's, it's really a case that film soundtracks are generally getting more electronic and the skills involved as well are totally transferable. Obviously, you still need to have the, the understanding of like how things like orchestras work and you know the, the sort of the more classical music theory elements, but also as well sound design and synthesis and being able to create soundscapes is something that is incredibly important these days. So being able to have a command of both is something that will really put you into a great position, um, both in terms of being able to create sort of more contemporary film scores because there really are a combination now of synthesized elements and really heavy sound design as well as in combination with the more kind of classical traditional element really. So is there any uh, particular pieces of hardware that, or, or software that mm -hmm. has kind of translated from one to the other? Oh yeah, totally. I mean, there are several tools that really help you to completely bridge the divide. Um, I would say Spectrosonics is a huge part of what I do both in the film and in the electronic world both in terms of the productions that I'm creating for my new record label, Chapter 24 Records, as well as the film work is heavily reliant on things like Trillion and things like Omnisphere as well. Uh, really all the Spectrosonic gear, including Stylus, is a massive part of, of what I do in both ends of the game. So that's one thing that can apply itself really to to any sort of um, electronic music and film score kind of application. The Really, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of synths that are doing really great emulations of old hardware are very translatable as well these days. You normally hear a lot of real, like, nice arpeggiated sort of under underbellies as used as foundations for for film scores. So, you know, using things like even I've used things like Leonard Digital Silent. I've used things like the uh, the Arturia Mini Moog. Um, and also, you know, a lot of the uh, the elements within plugins, even like Camel Fat Alchemy, Camel Fat Camel Audio Alchemy, even, um, is is great because again, they just have that that ability to to become something very electronic and very bold for the dance floor, but they can really translate emotionally and in terms of their texture into a, a film score kind of element really, really well. Is there anyone who kind of particularly, or any soundtracks that really kind of influenced you and really made you want to like kind of go into that field? Well, God, how, how long have you got? Uh, <laughs> there's, there's so many scores that really, really got me into it. I mean, obviously everyone quotes Hans Zimmer. Um, and you know, I'd be lying if I said that he wasn't a big influence, because he is. But as I got sort of deeper into looking into the film score kind of world, I became much more influenced by the more electronic style of film scoring so obviously you've got people like you know john carpenter you've got people like um van gellis obviously with blade runner and you know chariots of fire that kind of thing but the more contemporary electronic composers are the ones that really get me people like cliff martinez is an incredible example of what you can do with these tools that some of them I've already mentioned he also uses. And also people like Clint Mansell, who's come from a pop background and has really lent uh, an electronic sensibility to, you know, epic, almost like timeless kind of film soundtracks. So if I was gonna sort of quote some more contemporary names, they're really the guys that I'm really, really into. And last year, I think Stephen Price, who did the score for Gravity, was someone who really, really, you know, opened my eyes to a lot of, of possibilities in terms of real hardcore sound design, as well as being able to meld that into a more melodic element. I'm very interested in scores that actually blur the lines between them being sound design 
and something more emotional. And it shows you how close those worlds are now getting in terms of the traditional sound design of things like, you know, engines and, you know, rockets going off and things like that in movies and the more kind of sonically kind of emotional element. And it all helps to build one overall kind of overarching world. So I'm interested in composers that kind of really combine the two and really work very closely with more traditional sound designers. Okay, great. Um, could we see something that uh, that you've kind of done and that's helped translate? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure, absolutely, no problem at all, yeah. Okay, we're in my computer now, so I'm just going to move over to Logic. So this is a session of a recent remix that I have done for Salador Records for a Mexican duo called Climbers. Tracks called Big City Lights, you can find it online, Beatport, etc., and you can have a listen to the full track there. Just wants to guide you through some techniques. Now, in terms of the sort of cinematic textures in this track, big, big user of Omnisphere. You'll see I've got three different instances of Omnisphere in this session. And the reason for that is because I want to separate the processing. Here, first of all, I'm using like a granular, bowed style electric guitar in order to give that kind of grit. And then you'll see here in this second version of Omnisphere where a lot of these, you know, uh, Himalayan kind of pads and different styles of instruments, they're all coming in using one instance. Now, what that means is I'm actually using the Omnisphere in this case as a multi-out. Now, that means I've got various auxes spread off the main instruments. I mean, I can save CPU, I can do mixing inside of the one instance of the plugin, add group effects, and makes life a hell of a lot easier. Now, also as well, moving on to sort of the low end and the bass, very big user of Silent. And you can see here, I've got this lovely kind of techno stroke house music re-space in this instance. And here, just a very simple kind of sub sine wave in order to back that up. In terms of the sort of rhythmic elements, I'm using again Omnisphere here in a multi situation, meaning I'm using several channels at once, muting a couple because I don't really want those elements in. But the Omni beat here is exactly what is being taken care of by that particular multi sample, as you can see here, the stack mode is on. So you can see also as well, I'm a big user of contact using Sasha Sound Lab. Love what Kevin and the guys at Audio Raiders have done with this. Feels very much like the future of sample packs, if you ask me. And also big user of Evolve. Love all the heavy heaviosity stuff for those stings and transitions. Really nice for tension. And again, that more kind of uncertain kind of tone. Elsewhere, I'm actually on the cymbals, particularly using Drummer which is a great addition to Logic 10. Really big fan of it. Just was able to just give the parameters to the AI drummer just to go for the cymbals and the crashes and you know go really splashy and percussive, which is exactly what it did there right at the right time. And also for our main arpeggio, using Reactor. And love this plugin. Micro Prism gives you some really nice organic sounds so i'm just going to play this now for you so you can get a feeling of how all that lays together and how i've combined both electronic and film music sound design type techniques to get the final sound
where do you see the future going with uh, with this kind of with your career of crossing over yeah. to uh, the film world? Yeah, I mean, I see myself increasingly crossing over into the film world more and more. Um, I mean, I've obviously done you know a lot of stuff with you know various types of you know work in film and in post production. I've done practically everything from foley work to sound design to to soundtrack work, and really, soundtrack is really where I see my future. But that doesn't mean that I'm not going to be continuing to be you know influenced and be you know making moves in the electronic music world because you know it's where my home is and it's what I'm really really passionate about and it's what's really kind of given me the foundation to be able to move in that more kind of cinematic direction really. So I'm just really motivated to do stuff that really speaks to people, whether that be on a dance floor, in a film setting or in any other kind of way. But definitely I see cinema and, and film, television, games as being a big part of my future. So you also do a lot of uh, like educational stuff. Yeah. Um, was that kind of like a conscious effort to step into that or hmm. did you kind of just realise you had all this knowledge and just kind of wanted to impart some of it? Yeah, I mean, if, if anyone who knows me could tell you one thing about me is that I am never short of saying something. So I seemed oddly matched straight away for being in a position to share knowledge. And I suppose the answer to your question is yes and no. Uh, I always had a kind of a desire to share what I knew with people, mostly because I was just really excited by the possibility. And it was just like, dude, have you seen this shit? Like, you can really do this. Like, this is amazing. Like, I can't believe it. And that was, again, part of the reason why I got into teaching. And I did kind of fall into it, if I'm being honest. I, you know, I was a student at SAE in Liverpool. I did an audio engineering diploma. And then when I finished that diploma, um, I was that much of a pain in the backside to them that they just ended up giving me a teaching job. And it was great because I did well on the course and, you know, it was always about me being able to share with the people who I was studying with and around the college, like what I knew and being able to help people, which is, you know, something I've always been motivated to do. So that's kind of morphed now into full on artist development. In terms of the education, it's amazing because I've been here all weekends. I've had amazing feedback from the workshops that I've been running. But if I'm being completely honest, I've actually learned as much as I've imparted. And that's one of the reasons why I was just talking to Mike Huckabee before at the end of his machine masterclass, which was absolutely brilliant. And he taught me a couple of things. And you know, he said exactly the same thing, that the reason why he teaches is because he wants to learn. So if anyone really wants to learn this game or any sort of trade or any sort of industry that they want to get into, the best thing they can do is acquire enough skills to be able to teach it to other people because that's when you really get the knowledge.